So who knew it could be so much fun learning about the nature of mind? Like how immediately rewarding it is recognizing the actual nature of mind. I didn't know, but I do now. And the reason why it's so rewarding is because the conventional way of using our mind is to focus in on all of the descriptions and to try and make sense of them. To analyze our experience and then to analyze our analysis of the experience and then to talk about our analysis <laughs> of our analysis with other people. It's already starting to hurt a little bit. And um, what this leads to is a life of tension, um, hypervigilance, so where we're continually checking in and aware of everything that's going on for us, where we are checking in to see whether what's going on for us is what we want to be going on for us, whether the descriptions of our experience match the ideas of what our experience should be. And when they match, then that seems to be a good thing, and then we need to work out how we keep that match in place. And when they don't match, we need to work out what needs to change so that our experience matches as closely as possible our ideas about what it should be. And just that alone is hard work, and it's never-ending. So the experience, your experience is always changing. Even if you're sat in the same place every day, you'll never have the same experience twice. You know, your thoughts and emotions and sensations are completely unpredictable each day. And so to try this continual game of arranging things to match up with an idea about how things should be is the definition of exhaustion. And um, I know I played that game for many years and it was really hard work and I didn't know that there was any other way to approach life. I just thought that's just what you did because that's what everybody else around me seemed to be doing. And um, nobody I had met at that point had ever really questioned that. You know, I just, that's what you do. You try and work out what your life should look like based on vague ideas that you accumulate as you go throughout your life. So th it's really interesting, it, the assumptions that I picked up from like society and friends and family and how ingrained those are, like I, sh I should be happy all of the time. And I'd never questioned that. I, it was like, well, yes, obviously, I sh you know, should be happy all of the time. The only problem with that is that I wasn't happy all of the time and I'm still not happy all of the time. And that means that I'm continually then looking to try and make my experience match up with this idea. One of them, one of many, was that I should be happy all of the time. And then to be introduced to the actual nature of mind, the, the pristine reality, the complete openness of intelligence that is the basis of everything. And to discover that this is the basis of my experience right now, it's always been the basis of my experience and is naturally present regardless of whether I'm happy, sad or anything in between. And to be able to identify this in my own experience just changed everything. So if you stop thinking for a moment, and you notice what's there, what remains. There's an intelligence, there's an alertness, there's something that's aware of the next thought that just spontaneously arises, the next sensation or emotion. This is open intelligence. This is the basis of your experience, this is the nature of your mind. So it's wide open like a clear sky, naturally relaxed and at ease. Oh, it's just such a relief. Like in each short moment of that recognition, the instinctive recognition of the actual nature of mind, open intelligence, there's immediate access to um, the ease of being that I had looked for in rearranging my experience. So I kind of thought that if I managed to find a way to make myself happy all of the time, then I would be completely relaxed and at ease. But that wasn't the case, because when I was happy, then I needed to work out what is making me happy, and try and work out how do I keep that in place. So even when I was feeling happy, even with the positive descriptions, there was still this underlying tension, there was still effort involved. I was still really aware of everything that was going on, trying to work out, well, 
know, just what is it that's made me happy? Why am I feeling happy this morning? I wasn't yesterday, so something's changed. And what is it? You know, was it, you know, food or the people I'm with or what I'm doing or where I am or, you know, just, you know, what is it? And so just this continual game of efforting to try and understand my experience and then just manipulate it into the description that I thought it should be. And so to know the nature of mind is an immediate relief because I can just stop that and just stop that game. I cut it at the root and I go to the basis of my experience, the absolute essence, the foundation, open intelligence by which everything is known. Open intelligence that is um, the source of great wisdom. The intelligence that sees everything as it is rather than as I think it should be, or as I hope it will be, or as I want it to be. Open intelligence seeing it as it actually is. And for that we don't need any descriptions. We don't need all of these accumulated conceptual frameworks that we've adopted, like the one where I think I should be happy all of the time. It's just an idea that I'd taken on board without even realising I'd taken it on, taken it on board. And there's a, an incredible training called the Twelve Empowerments. And one of the reasons it's so incredible is that you get to look and see really clearly what are all of these ideas that I've taken on board about who I am, what life is, what I should be doing, what it all means, without realising that I've taken them on board. Because many of them we're not even aware of. And they're ideas we adopt as we go throughout our life and then we simply take them to be true without even knowing that we're doing that. So to have an opportunity to become clear on those ideas is amazing. Even the birds celebrate. Thank you for your support. And then, of course, we have all of the pleasant, happy sensations, but then some of the time it's not so pleasant and happy. And um, we can have all kinds of experiences. Have you noticed that? <laughs> like all kinds of experiences. Like everything comes up when we live our normal everyday life. Like just in the course of one day. You could even consider like what's happened in the last couple of hours. In terms of your experience, your thoughts, your emotions, like you know, feeling happy, feeling a bit uncomfortable, feeling glad to be awake that morning, feeling tired and you just want to go back to bed and feeling hungry or feeling full or feeling really fit and healthy or then noticing the pain in your foot or you know, just all of this incredible unpredictable display of experience. And so the practice here is to take short moments of just allowing that display to be however it is. It's so, so simple. And you will hear things in the training like the equalness and evenness of all data. And data is just a term for all of our experience. We don't need to divide it up anymore. We can just call it data. And we can hear something like all data are equal and even appearances of open intelligence. And if we look at it in terms of the description, that's not the case. Because I have some experiences that are good and some experiences that are bad. So they're not equal, are they? There's the good ones and the bad ones. So what the equalness and evenness is referring to is that all appearances, regardless of the description, regardless of what category we put them in, have fundamental qualities or properties that are exactly the same. And one is that they arise spontaneously. So we can't predict what we're going to think or feel or experience in any particular moment. We might try and control it, but if we were really good at controlling it, then we would be happy all of the time. So obviously we're not. So we can't control our experience. So everything arises spontaneously. It's really fascinating just to look at your experience and I see that um, all of the stories I have about what's going on. So I might be with a group of people and somebody will say something and um, I think, oh great, that's good, yeah, I, I agree with that. And, um, or perhaps I take it as a compliment and, oh, thank you, yeah, I like these people. <laughs> and then somebody will say something, maybe it's something not even directed at me and it's like, oh, I'm not sure I agree with that. And actually, 
I'm not sure I even want to be with these people anymore. And so it's completely unpredictable, our display of experience. And so to relax and allow it to be as it is, we first of all see that it is arising spontaneously. I can't predict or control it, whether it's positive, negative or neutral. And then the other thing that we can say about all experience, however we describe it, is it self-releases naturally. Like um, a snake in a knot undoes itself without any effort. So you don't need to do anything for the spontaneous self-release of your experience to be guaranteed. Another way to put that is that everything just self-releases naturally, effortlessly, without anything needing to be done. So whether you describe your experience as positive, negative or neutral, it has the same fundamental qualities. And the third quality we could say is that no matter what it is, it arises inseparable from open intelligence. So there's no description, no experience, no perception, no thought or emotion that can be found to happen or be experienced anywhere other than in of, as and through open intelligence. And this is the practice of short moments where you get to see whether that's true or not for yourself. And when you begin to see that nothing can be found to have an independent nature, then you can begin to relax. When you see that everything arises spontaneously and self-releases naturally, then you can relax even more. Because by identifying the actual nature of our experience, you can see that you don't need to do anything about it. All of the games of managing it, of trying to manipulate it and control it and make it look a particular way, were never required for us to experience the ease of being that we were looking for. The ease of being is found in the recognition of open intelligence in the flow of our experience, in the sensations of desire. Whilst we are doing something with the desire, so we can either be indulging it, which with desire is quite obvious when we're indulging a desire, that might be actually acting on it or that might be thinking about it obsessively. That's another kind of indulgence. Another thing we can do with desire is really avoid it. It's like, um, I'm really attracted to that person over there, so I'm going to go that way. That's an obvious avoidance. Or a replacement. So. Um, if I'm feeling unhappy, then I may be able to do things that can generate positive experiences. But with all of these approaches, what I'm actually saying is this desire, it really is something. It, it really is something and I've either got to indulge it or I've got to avoid it or I've got to change it into something else, but it really is something and it's a threat to me. When we recognize in the direct encounter with the desire that it is inseparable from open intelligence, it is open intelligence. It's the dynamic energy of open intelligence, like um, the reflections in a crystal ball are the dynamic energy of a crystal ball. Then we be, become able to allow the desire to be as it is. And in that we become free from the desire. And that freedom means that we are at choice as to how we respond to that desire. This is really powerful because this gives us the mastery over the data that we've always been looking for. So whatever I do with a desire, it makes it seem like it has power over me. Whether I follow it through or I try and avoid it, it seems like it has power. But that would be like saying um, a reflection in the crystal ball has the power to affect the original openness and purity of the crystal ball, which is not true. No matter what is reflected in the crystal ball, the crystal ball remains completely unaffected. It really doesn't mind and doesn't care. It reflects it without bias. And this is the same relationship with our open intelligence, what's looking through your eyes right now, like immediately, with all of our experience. The experience is the inseparable display, the dynamic energy of open intelligence. And each time we recognize this for a short moment, we train up our certainty that this is true, that this is the case. And practice when it's easy for you. This is a great starting point. So if there are things that we feel incredibly desirous for, and maybe we've in, been indulging them for years, that might not be the easiest place to start practicing short, practicing short moments. It might be, but it's different for everybody. Sometimes for myself, I've found it's easy to practice when things are going well. 
you know, when there's no real challenge, when I'm feeling relaxed anyway, then to take a short moment and build up my capacity to rely on open intelligence. And then when the bigger thing comes, then I've already practiced, I've already built up that capacity. Some people find it easier to practice with the really intense negative data or really um, compelling desirous data. And however it is for you, the practice of short moments is the way that you tap into your ability to access the wisdom that is inseparable from whatever you're thinking, feeling or, or, or experiencing. So the data are the power of great benefit when we allow them to be as they are. Whilst we're doing something with them, there's just a confusing mess of misunderstanding of what our experience means. It's so simple, but it does require this training up process, even after the introduction, even after the recognition, because the habit of emphasizing and focusing in on certain data is just really something we've been doing for a long time. But it does relax, it does soften, it does open up. And just being involved in the training, in the Four Mainstays, so much of that happens naturally, like effortlessly. You know, there will be some things that we actively take short moments with and other things that just resolve naturally. Just as we gain more confidence, things that you used to do, suddenly you'll find that you're no longer doing them. Or things that you used to say, suddenly you're not using your speech in that way. You're discovering this skillfulness, this care, this love this um, capacity to be of benefit to yourself and others that is innate, it's inbuilt. And this is what we access when we go directly to open intelligence. And then we just get used to that. We repeat the short moments many times until open intelligence is obvious at all times. It's like training anything up. We learn how to do it, we practice it. 